100 speed drills, five yards. Shredding it. You know, it's running up here at altitude, getting blood up, it's breathing. So you gotta focus on the basics. It's a good course. GP100, Ruger run in the trench. I'm digging it. Shooting really good. It has a trigger job by Terry G from Impact Guns. Digging it. I'm working on my speed reloads. I guess it was my destiny. That is to become a gun toting freak. GTF for short. Check out this picture of me, age six. This is what I'm talking about. Rocking the then pistol only weapon system. Note the goggles and the overly large BDU pants. Scored those from dumpster diving with my brother there in the background. We did that all the time. Eglin Air Force Base. It's about the only way we could score any cool gear. I was actually amazed at what I found. Those two items being a good example. And it started me on the road of, I guess, where I'm at today. Gear reviewer of things which are tactically worthwhile in your system. Hello everybody, this is Nut and Fancy running the Nut and Fancy Project, TMP for short, and even at that young age I had my sights set on the guns I wanted for life. My family arsenal, so to speak. One of those, by the way, was a Ruger Security 6 357 Magnum. Somewhere I have a picture of me sitting in my bedroom, probably around the age 10 or so. In the background you can see my cork uh, bulletin board got a security six pinned to it one of the must get items as I got to adulthood it's taken me a while to get there guys here I am in my 40s finally scored me a Ruger 357 and man does it rock welcome to the detailed tabletop review of another full-size quintessential combat 357 revolver GP100 love this thing and guys, you're looking at the end of a year-long test for this gun. And I can't tell you how much I love that when I'm able to do it. Because I bring to the table a lot of experience with the gun that I'm reviewing and a lot of data that I can share with you. Some of it may be good, some of it may be bad. I do my best via this, talking about the gun. Check out this combat masterpiece. I don't think I cleaned it once during the review. In fact, I know I didn't. That thing is battle hardened, man. All kinds of carbon deposits on it. That is a sweet looking GP100. GP100 fans, if you already own the gun, you're going to be nodding your head during this review. You're going to be going, yep, 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 know it. This gun is so awesome. It's going to get, get rated extremely high on my likability scale. Let's jump right into it. Uh, actually, not quite POU yet. Let me back up. This is a successor to the gun I, I had on my bulletin board those many years ago, and that is a successor to the security, speed, and service 6 line that Ruger used to do. My understanding is that GB100 is an improvement in that it is stronger. It's a thicker frame, thicker cylinder, it's heavier duty than the previous uh, versions. 
security, service, speed six, and also it has a full under lug under the barrel. Some guys may look at that as a good thing. Some may look at it as a bad thing. I personally think it's mostly good, although I really like to see Ruger uh, pop out a GP100 that is a throwback to the lighter weight and probably faster in hand old style revolvers of their former models. That would be cool. Could be just a limited edition. I think it would sell like crazy. GP100 though is a successor introduced I think around 1985 or so. Been ex has been extremely successful. You're going to hear all the details at least as I see them. Sorry if I forget a few. If I get some wrong I do my best. You know how we go. Okay, there's your history. That's all I'm going to say. POU, philosophy of use. I'm going to pop out of the gate right here and say uh, philosophy of use that I like best is a recreational revolver. It's chambered for 357, but if you run 38 special in it, especially if you're committed to hand loading those 38 specials, you're going to have a very economical practice revolver, more or less. I mean, it's not like rimfire. Recreational gun, man, you bet. Was it fun shooting? Absolutely. All the crew members that had a chance to fire the TMP GP100 fell in love with it. Uh, by the way, this one's wearing the Terry Gardner trigger job from Impact Guns, and that just helped immensely. We'll talk a little bit more about that in ergonomics. Recreational POU, number one. Secondarily, I would say home defense gun. It is lacking one thing that I really, really advocate you have on your home defense gun, and that is a way to mount a light. So you can identify Mr. Bad Guys. He decides, to, for whatever reason, to come into your humble abode and to do bad things. Okay? It would be good to light him up with a flashlight or a weapon light prior to lighting him up with six rounds of full power 357, if you catch my drift. It doesn't have a light, so you're going to have to integrate a light uh, with your other hand, of course, and there's techniques to do that. They all suck, if you ask me. It's better to have it on the gun, especially when you're in a high stress environment. But as a very simple, easy to use home defense gun, sans light, great option. Next one, truck gun. Actually a vehicle gun of whatever kind you want. It could be boat, could be ATV, could be truck, anywhere you can fit the size and weight, great option. Probably not a great law enforcement option anymore. I think six rounds is just too few, sorry, it just is. Maybe back in 1972, it rocked. Dirty Harry seemed to do pretty good with it, I know. But I think nowadays, we just have so many awesome, reliable, hard-hitting semi-autos on the market. I would not handicap myself with a revolver. Your mileage may vary. Now, there's other guys, you know, like uh, Jerry Mikulik. Very fast with a revolver. It really doesn't handicap them at all. And if you practice to that level, or if you're that gifted... Uh, I think you'll be very well armed not with a GP100, so it doesn't really matter. I would say it's probably not my first choice, second, third, or even fourth for a raw gun without rule of law. It's just too darn heavy, guys. Way heavy. And again, firepower limited. There's too many other options, but those are the POUs as I see them. Incidentally, it comes in various barrel lengths. This is a good point to talk about this. It comes in 3-inch, 4-inch, 6 inch barrel length. This is my favorite. Actually, it's a 4.2 inch barrel length. This is catalog number KGP KGP-141. Satin stainless steel GP100, probably my favorite. I also very much love the blued version. That's catalog number GP141. Either one I could be extremely happy with. There have been some limited edition 5 inch barrel GP100s. Those are also awesome and in some people's minds that's the ideal barrel length. I must say I'm pretty happy with a 4.2 inch. Really happy. After seeing how it's performed in running gun, accuracy testing over a year's period in TMP, yeah, it's been great. Also comes, this is a uh, 357 38 Special, of course, holding six rounds. It also comes in a seven shot 327 Federal Magnum version. So you might want to opt for that. That's gonna be even more expensive unless you're hand loading, then you could probably afford to shoot it more. Here we go into size and weight. Huh, what to say? It's a bad mamma jamma. You're looking at a full sized 357 Magnum. If we go back to when I was age 10 on that bulletin board, that's what I wanted. I mean, back in the 70s, like I've, I've talked about in some other reviews, that was the go to cartridge to getting the job done. And I was thinking back then, hey, 357, that's it. It is a fight stopper, it's proven. You know, there's state police 
Even back then, they were having such tremendous success with a 125 grain jacket at hollow point load. I mean, that's what I wanted. I wanted that in my, my arsenal. If it's a heavy gun that launches it, whatever. Still want it. I still love it. I'm just realistic about the application of POUs, of what the gun can do. Uh, it's chunky, man. It's 40 ounces. There is some bad to that. That makes it very difficult to carry, especially if you're integrating it into other systems. Like if you're hiking a long way, if you have a backpack, all the other stuff I'm always preaching about. I don't know, man. Probably not taking the GP100 with me. Sorry, because then I'm taking a 40 ounce gun. I'm taking speed loaders that are loaded up. Speed loaders weigh a little bit, they add weight. You know what I'm saying. It is a good thing though when you start shooting the gun a lot and when you're shooting full power 357 loads. It is a very good thing. Just like I've said in some of my 1911 reviews, the steel framed ones, as a ranged gun, steel dominates. Faster on target, less muzzle flip, it's more comfortable to shoot, especially if the person shooting this, like your wife, your girlfriend, is recoil shy. And they don't like recoil. This is a great gun to step them up to center fire. Maybe you've been training them on rim fire, which I highly advocate you do, whether it's a revolver, semi auto, single shot, don't matter. Step them up to this, shooting 38 specials. They won't be freaking out when they pull the trigger. It won't be harsh to them. That's when the 40 ounces is a very, very good thing. Again, you have the full under barrel lug. I mostly like it because it does help that recoil property. I guess the softness in shooting the GP100. Firepower. You've been looking at it the whole time, dudes. Take that away. How about six rounds? We got some uh, golden sabers hanging out in the background. That's what these are, by the way. That's that load, smoking load, very potent. Um, six rounds, make them count. Make your hits count, just like I've said in all my revolver reviews. It kind of is a different approach to shooting in some people's minds. In my mind, it should always be the same approach. Whether I'm rocking a Glock 17 with a Glock 18, 33 round mag inside, or I have a GP100 with six rounds, I always want to shoot the same, and that is to hit the target. I don't care how fast you shoot, how cool you look when you shoot. If you don't hit the target, what's the purpose? Okay, if you can't hit the target with 357, then you maybe need to download the 38 special. Everything is about accuracy in my mind and actually making the rounds count when they really, really have to count. If you're if you are a good marksman, I think six rounds can be enough in most of those philosophies of use that I'm talk, talking about. The good news is this. Since it is a full-size revolver, just like I talked about on, oh, here it is again making a guest appearance, the Smith & Wesson 686. This is a 686P, by the way. It's going to be easier to reload. If you're running like a J-Frame Smith, maybe a Ruger LCR, you know, they're so compact, they're a little bit harder to manipulate, to swing that cylinder out. They don't have full-sized ejector rods to bring the cartridge or the casings out all the way easier to load. What you need to do is practice though. So. And you can do that, get some snap caps, couple speed loaders, you can do that in the comfort of your own home, practice over and over again, get that muscle memory down. And yes, reloading a revolver is its own skill set. It's its own set of muscle memory. You see me get it wrong and get it right in front of the TMP camera over the last year. And I feel like I'm always progressing trying to get better. If you're good at speed loading your GP100, you have some speed loaders. By the way, these are Safari Land Comp 2 speed loaders. I'm liking them. I think you're ready to rock and roll with this unit. Okay, even though you're popping six, you're back in action very quick. Again, you might want to watch Jerry Mikulik in action. That kind of shows you what's possible. Firepower is what it is. Again, in this, so what am I trying to say? 327, it's seven shot. You get one more round. I'm always up for more rounds. Here we go into accuracy. Let's see, over a year span, I have a lot of targets to show you. I'm going to try to go fast. Here we go. Uh, I guess I really got serious about shooting this thing uh, this summer, June. I th had some others I couldn't find. This is at 25 yards, and I actually had to cite this particular example in. It was shooting low right for me. Nice thing is that I have an adjustable, fully adjustable sight on the GP100. Absolutely love that option. Love it, love it, love it. Saw it on the 686 too, right? They had it. So it's shooting low right, disregard this, and this is my group at 25 yards. 
Uh, night was falling, so I didn't have time to shoot more. That's a pretty styling group. Pretty happy with that. Here's two groups shooting PMC. For whatever reason, I was shooting high left that day. This is the next month. I was having some issues getting this gun to get shooting where I really, really wanted it. Two groupings, one here, one there. Eh. 15 yards, 158 grain, lead round nose, CCI version. That's a real affordable ammo. Uh, not great. Not super, super awesome. There's, I think this was from standing, if I remember right. I could be wrong. Okay, not great. Really not great there. I wasn't happy with that at all. Remember, guys, I show you all the good, all the bad. You make your own judgments. That's a sweet group right there. Same load, CCI lead round nose. Another group right there. Another group right there. That's five rounds. Don't know where that round came from. And then we've got nice group right there with the CCI loads. 12 yards, same load. Not bad. Now it gets better, much better. This is what the gun's capable, I think, uh, when you dial it in. This is at 22 yards from rest. Nice, PMC full metal jacket, 38 specials. By the way, those golden sabers I've been showing you, they shot about the same way, really nice. I've been very happy with golden saber accuracy out of most guns. Uh, is that a hole? Yeah, I may have forgot, to, I may have opened it up right there. Okay, so I think there's your accuracy. Uh, I did have to work a little bit harder with the GP100 to get that level of accuracy than I did with the 686. Keeping it real. Just saying, I did. I don't know why. Don't know why. I did. And some of those groups, as you saw, a little bit scattered. And I'm like, I know the gun's more capable than this. I've got to show the capability. So I settled down, really concentrated on the trigger pull all the other stuff. And again, I'm showing you a very small cross section of loads. If I had a ton of money, I would have shot like, you know, 25, 50 of these, whole bunches of those. Maybe when I get an ammo sponsor, I'll be doing that, giving you guys a broader spectrum of accuracy. I would say the GP100 is capable of two inch groups. From what I've seen at 25 yards with extremely careful shooting, rested shooting. Okay, uh, in our drills, I'm talking about trench warfare drill, the eat lead drill, and then also speed drills uh, there on indoor ranges, it rocked. Uh, I mean, the accuracy was excellent. Everybody that shot it got squared away very quickly. Good job on the ergonomics. Talked about the weight already. I think it's mostly, in, like I said, most POUs, a very good thing. Uh, the balance, the feel is solid. Just like I said in the 686 review, all of that can be said and applied to the GP100. It inspires confidence. It looks bad in hand, don't you think? Isn't that just a handsome looking revolver? I think it is. Some guys say that the underlug, the way Ruger executes it, isn't exactly as cool as a Python or a 686. Um, I'll disagree with that. I think it looks very cool. Excuse me, I like how it tapers right here. The smooth has kind of a somewhat chamfered or maybe melted appearance. There, by way of reference, is a 686P. You can see it's under lug. I think it's a handsome gun. Ergonomically speaking, we've talked about the weight issues. How about that trigger? Out of box, I will say the trigger is, huh, how do I put this? Industrial? Yeah, that's a good way. Industrial. Was not impressed with the Ruger GP100 trigger out of box. It stacked a lot. It seemed like, as some guys mentioned, there's a hump mid-pull. Okay, and I just wasn't digging it so much. Had to get some work done on it, so I took it up to my buddy, Terry G, Impact Guns, Ogden, Utah. There's a video out there. It's called Getting Stoned with Yoda. I'll annotate it in the right. I laughed when I came up with that name. It's just funny. Uh, Yoda, it's because he's so wise. The guy can fix any gun I've ever brought to him. He's so good with trigger jobs. And man, did he do a number on the GP100. Number as in, it's awesome. How's this? This sucker pulls at three pounds now. The double action is a very smooth, non-stacking seven and a half pound break. In fact, all my speed drills, I shot impact guns. This week, in fact, were done from double action. Everyone remarked, wow, I can't believe I'm shooting this from double action. Incidentally, I also had him install some reduced power hammer springs by Wolf. There is a 
asterisk next to that. Be careful when you do that because sometimes you may not, may not get reliable ignition after that. In other words, with that reduced power hammer spring, the hammer's not falling and striking perhaps a hard primer hard enough to ignite the cartridge. With 357 rounds of all the brands that I've been talking about, I haven't seen any problems with it. In fact, it's been 100% reliable and it is a dream to shoot. A lot of folks will say, people that are very smart, smarter than me, will say that the, the Ruger actually responds to gunsmithing better than the Smith & Wesson. Um, I don't know if I can speak with any authority on that. I will say that the work that was done by Terry on this has transformed the it. gun I could have been into something that is just wicked, soft, comfortable, and fast to shoot. Remember, that's the main reason I like my trigger jobs. It's for speed and then also for sight consistency as I'm shooting. Let's talk about the sights. I already said they're adjustable. On the GP100, it has a white outline. Love it. And then that is my own modification. That is a fluorescent painted front sight by me, nothing fancy. If you don't like that black sight, I recommend, and I don't by the way, I recommend you do the same modification. The way I do that is I take tester's model paint, I degrease the front sight, paint down flat white, two or three coats, let them dry, don't hurry the project, and then I go fluorescent testers on top of it, or whatever brand model paint you want. You can see over time with presentations, it'll wear down. That's a cheap way to do it. If you don't, if you want to do it the right way, I guess you should drift out that front sight, which is easy, easy to do with that pin there on the barrel side. Pop it out, and if you go to Ruger's shopruger.com, they have some uh, some sight inserts you can put in there. One of them, one of them's red. I think they have different colors you can put in there. And then when we talk about accessories, Fire Sights also makes a set for them if you want those. Albeit, I've had some durability issues on Fire Sight sights, to be honest with you guys. Huh. I would just paint it just like you did, or just like I did there. Okay, I love the sights on them after they're squared away like I'm showing you. They're not chamfered charge holes there in the cylinder. Look at all that carbon buildup, dudes. That is amazing. I think later on I may uh, polish you know, the charging holes and also have maybe Terry or someone in the know uh, chamfer that for faster reloading. Maybe, just maybe. Okay, another good thing about the GP100 design is that it has a stud frame right here underneath and that makes for some people with smaller hands a shorter trigger reach when we're talking about the trigger so they for instance your wife your girlfriend may find shooting GP100 to be more manageable than they would think otherwise just by looking at the gun at first uh, in comparison to the 686 I'm talking Smith & Wesson the gun is not as finely finished I'm not talking about the trigger here I'm talking about more or less the frame there are some I wouldn't say sharp edges, but they're not quite as rounded as a 686 or a Smith & Wesson. In fact, the whole fit and finish on the Ruger is not going to be as good, in my opinion, because one, we're talking kind of two different price levels. This is a much more expensive gun. It comes from one of the oldest manufacturers of revolvers on the freaking planet. Yeah, they kind of know how to put together a revolver, Smith & Wesson. They, they charge you for it. <laughs> they do. It's expensive. Fit and finish better, not quite as good. Just be aware. I never found any of the edges on the GP100 to be obnoxious, except just like the SP101, the hammer, that was obnoxious. The hammers on Ruger's double action revolvers are very sharp. I take a file to them, a very fine uh, file, and I'll just kill that edge right here, and then I sand it. And I'll round it off, and that kills that edge for me. Other, once I've done that, I'm pretty happy with it. I don't really need to bevel it any further other ergonomics. These are the newer style GP100 grips. These are by Hogue. I love them. Notice also, if we compare it against the 686, you have a rear strap exposed. In other words, they do not cover the frame of the gun all the way. Kind of a disadvantage, advantage Ruger, because you won't see that problem at all. Again, we have the frame stud running down the center of these. Uh, I love these grips. I have no intention of replacing them. If you wanted to go old school, that is GP100 old school, the ones that had the wood inlays in the, in the middle of them, you can get those directly from Ruger. You can go to Brownells and get them. I don't think they're overly expensive. It's, at Brownells, it's uh, catalog number 392-100-586. Slap them on there if you want them for second kind of cool.
Okay, I love the grips as they are. I found that they just control the recoil perfectly. They fit my hands perfectly. I'll say what I always say about rubber grips. So if you are carrying it in a holster off on your side, expect it to grab clothing. That's the downside to rubber. Notice the stippling on those hoe grips. They do enclose that back strap. Love it. Love the smooth face trigger on it too, talking about ergonomics. No problems there. I like the cylinder release on the Rugers. I can take each one, I don't know, uh, equally well. In other words, I'm talking, this is a push button cylinder release on the GP100, right? It's always been that way on the Ruger double actions. And then here's the Smith & Wesson 686. You push it, cylinder release. Don't have a Colt Python on the table. That was a pull from Colt, right? I can take all of them. I, it doesn't matter. I really don't have a preference. No issues whatsoever. Incidentally, notice how this sucker locks into the frame. You've got a locking paw right here from the cylinder crane, then it locks here in the back too. Two points of contact. It does not lock in front of the ejector rod. Some guys will tell you this is a much stronger locking arrangement than the Smith & Wesson, which uses an ejector rod locking. So it locks right here. And in the back, I don't notice any problems in the Smith & Wesson, but some guys say, eh, you know, Ruger's a better system. There's probably going to be debate on that all the time. Let's check the cylinder wiggle. About what we expect. Side to side, laterally pretty tight, actually. And this is a good time also to check the cylinder gap, too. Kind of carbonized there. You can check it, and what do you know? Got a little feeler gauge. I want to throw this in it. Six thousandths. See if it fits. I know it does. I did it off camera. Just prove it. That's about ideal. I think they say it should run about four thousandths to eight thousandths in distance. That is the cylinder to barrel gap, and this is ideal. You can see it fits just a little bit snug in there. You don't want it too much because it'll affect accuracy. You don't want it too tight, it'll affect reliability. Uh, ergonomically speaking, though, it's a pretty good gun. There are some improvements like the trigger, maybe a little bit of work on the hammer, squared away. I'm mean, incidentally look at the barrel. It is slightly chamfered. It's so dirty you can hardly see it. Kind of beveled there. Crown job on it. Field strip and maintenance. Did I cover all that stuff? Probably not. Not much to say on field strip and maintenance except this. This is not a side plate revolver. Okay, if we look at the Smith and Wesson series, the way we take those apart was we very carefully remove this side plate right here, and we'll see all the inner workings of the revolver right here, laid in pins and such. The Ruger GP100 is a sub-assembly revolver. When you take it apart, which by the way, I'm not going to do on table, but I'll reference the manual right now, is shown actually pretty clearly in the manual. This is how you do it. You'll pop your grip off. If you want, take your hammer off. Drop out the sub-assembly of the trigger. And if you want, take the cylinder out as well. In the end, you'll end up with this like that. Your sub-assemblies makes it easy to maintain, to clean, to get to, and actually it makes it really easy to swap grips out on too. There's that stud portion of the frame which retains the grip. Okay, that's basically field strip. For maintenance, it's what a revolver always is. Kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, you basically have seven barrels. I looked at shopruger.com and they have a cleaning brush. This has probably been out forever. Sorry, I'm just cluing into it. Cleaning brush, which you can clean all six cylinders of the GP100 at one time. Awesome. That'll cut it down. Uh, you're going to have to spend some time on this. I am. And I'm going to clean it right after the review. Get all this carbon off of it. Under the star ejector, make sure all unburnt powder is gone, especially if you've been shooting 357 or plus P loads. Usually some, un, un, usually some unburnt powder that finds its way under there. That needs to seat, seat cleanly. I'll drop a few drops of oil under here. Clean all this out using lead removal cloth if I have to. I'll, ex I'll extend that, clean this. Sometimes I'll just use brake cleaner too to flush it out, dry it, and then I'll lubricate it after I've gotten all the carbon off of it. And then I'll really spend some time on the, force time on the forcing cone right here which by the way is pretty rugged in a GP100. Haven't heard of any failures, haven't seen of any, any failures either myself. Get in there, scrub the barrel out, good lead remover if you have to do it, if you've been shooting lead. Good copper remover, there you have it. Then I'll lubricate this portion here, that, the cylinder pawl here, the locking pawl here, maybe a drop here, not going crazy. 
And then also, again, the manual talks about where you should lubricate your GP100. Not a huge deal. It does take a little bit of time. Take care of your gun. It'll take care of you. On to accessories and versatility. GP100, extremely successful commercial design. Okay, as a GTFer, I say GTFer, uh, you want to look for this because that means you're going to have all kinds of holster options, probably sight options and grip options, at least when we're talking about the GP100. If you don't like the hoe grips, there's all kinds of grips you can slap on this thing. Again, you can go old school GP100, Ruger factory grips, Packmeyer makes a set. There's some custom wood sets out there you can throw on there. Sight sets, I mentioned uh, the fire sights. And by the way, the fire sight set catalog from Brownells number is 962-000-093 if you want that, running about $48. Uh, I was mentioning fire sights. I've had their fire, fiber optic uh, front sight pop out on me on another gun, and I wasn't too enthralled about that. I had to send it back to the factory. If you want night sights, they're available too for the GP100. I think Meprolite makes a set for them. Could be wrong. Note, however, in the 3 inch version of the GP100, it's actually a pinned front sight. It's not the dovetail slide out, easily swapped sight. Okay, so you're going to have to maybe just pop that retention pin out. On these longer barrel versions, it's going to be a piece of cake. Holsters. All kinds of holsters for the GP100. Specially molded leather holsters for the, holsters for the GP100. Man, I wish I could talk. GP100. Uh, went to shopruger.com. I think that's the website. And I'll roll the, you know, the footage in right now. They had a really cool looking holster by Triple K with a Ruger emblem on it. Doesn't break the bank. It looked nice. Had a good finish on it. Looks really cool, that Ruger emblem. About $43. Totally worth it. They have some Bianchi's. Galco makes some. Sky's the limit. This gun's been around forever. So there's going to be all kinds of holster options for it. Crimson Trace, by the way, makes a set of grips for it. Uh, Brownells has them. I think all kinds of people have them. But at Brownells, it's uh, call number 100-005-050. And then for accessories, we got to talk about speed loaders. I'm pretty happy with the HKS speed loader. It does take a skill set to use them. This is the wrong one. This is a 587. The one that works for this gun is a 586 Alpha six shot model. The ones I've been training on lately, again, are the Safari Land Comp 2 speed loaders. You just push them in, they release all the cartridges. By the way, TM Pierce taught me about these. I think on one of my revolver running guns, guys were saying, Buddies of mine say, hey, check out the, the Safari Lands. I did. Here they are. You're right. They do rock. Love when you guys teach me stuff. That's about the big stuff for accessories. On we go to oh, one of my favorite talking points. Versatility, by the way, is POU. We've already discussed that. Value. This is all good when we're talking about the Ruger GP100. Tons of value. Basically, $200 less than this gun. I'm not going to jump ship on the 686, so don't expect me to do that. I'm not. I love the 686. It's one of my all-time favorite full-size combat 357 revolvers. Nothing, nothing will ever change that. Sorry. This enters the same realm, though, especially when it comes in $200 less. Offers pretty close to the same accuracy, my mileage. Pretty much the same gun uh, once you get a trigger drop. Okay, once we'll that's squared away, that. then we're talking in the same realm as a nice Smith & Wesson 686. Ballpark price on the KGP, excuse me, let me say that again, KGP 141 is $535. Went to Impact Guns, they're showing it for $540. If you get the blued version, that's GP 141, 4.2 inch blued version, about $485. That's a pretty affordable price for a 357 revolver that will last you the rest of your life if you don't do something stupid with it. How about Taurus? Well, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm pretty cooled to Taurus offerings these days. They just, I mean, the ones I've shot, I'm just, they just don't have the same fit and finish. There's a Model 65. It's basically the same type of gun. It's a full-size underlug barrel. I haven't shot that particular one, so I, I can't really pass judgment. It's about the same price. In fact, it's exact same price. About five four hundred and eighty-five dollars for the blued version, I believe. There's some Model 66, Model 82. If I got more experience with them and really ran them through the ringer, like I've done with this gun, maybe I'd really, really dig them. But knowing what I know now about the record and reliability of Taurus, which eh, 
ain't so good talking to my gun sellers, I'd go Ruger, dudes. Same price, going with an American-made Ruger stainless steel combat 357. It's a no-brainer to me. No-brainer. I think value is excellent. Cruising along. Durability and reliability. I did have some issues with the Ruger GP100. I think they were minor in nature. Basically, it was cylinder lockup. So I'd be shooting the gun and run and gun action, pull the trigger, nothing happens. The tap rack bang for a revolver goes something like this. You smack the, the cylinder in. It probably was not engaged all the way. I thought it was. Maybe it was in between lugs. I, I don't know. Usually when I did that, actually every time when I did that, the gun would then fire. Tap rack bang, smack that cylinder as hard as you can, continue to fire. If that doesn't work, open the cylinder up again, close it again, and see what it does. Durability is just going to be smoking. It really is. I think it's just going to last and last and last. Notice, by the way, where they cut the cylinder notches, right where the thicker metal starts, and that's in contrast to the Smith & Wesson 686. You see they cut the cylinder notches right, right where the fluting is. Does that make a big difference? Nope. I'll say it makes no difference at all. But it is an attempt to make the gun as strong as possible, and that's basically the overall feel that I get from the Ruger GP100. It is a strong handgun. No, uh, no expenses were spared, at least in terms of strength with the gun. Dur Ruger knows how to put together a very strong gun. Coming to the end. Track record. Phenomenal. Since 19, what is it, 85, GP100 has been out there. It's also inheriting the track record, if you ask me, of its previous versions. The security, service, speed six line. Outstanding. These are guns that have served in the holsters of law enforcement officers for decades. Very, very reliably uh, until the autos pretty much started to supersede in the law enforcement arena. Uh, it's a great gun. You, you will see in the comments here on this nut and fancy video of hundreds if not thousands of GP100 owners over the years that will echo that sentiment. They'll tell you of their awesome experience, their incredible reliability of this Combat 357 and its shootability as well. It is all deserved. It's not made up. It is a Hall of Famer gun. It truly is Hall of Famer. GT Effers, go out and buy yourself a GP100. I can't believe I haven't thrown that term out yet, GT Effers. I've been using it for decades. Yeah, you guys rock. And of course, GTF is the responsible, good gun owner who acts as a sheepdog to, for his family and for society. Thank you for that, and thank you especially for joining and participating in the National Rifle Association and any other political organization which supports our gun rights, which makes these guns possible for us to defend life and property. Love this gun. It is a huge win. That is the Net Fancy Review. See you later.